fit into fairly quick bands. Uh, Net and Florentino uh, leaving as quickly as is typical, but Ibanez less common. Right, I was getting a little bit too excited. Sorry about that, but TJ, they've done it. They've not banned Chris yet. They banned Annette first. I'm so proud of them. <laughs> yes, you were talking about that a lot <laughs> we, uh, last we were, week as well. We were harping on it. We had uh, Douglas, who leads uh, GLE yeah. Sports, reach out to me on Twitter. He said, the reason why there's so many crashed bans in Latter is because of the overemphasis on team fights. Crashed is a very good team fight character, meaning that if you're left alone in those team fights and you spend the crashed ultimate, well, you'll win them, but any team that figures out how not to focus on the team fights will win the region. We've gone through a ban phase without a crushed ban. These are EU bans. Oh my goodness. Apart from the Rickster getting through in favor of Ubeneth. Yeah, so it's Annette, Ubeneth, and Omen, and Elsu alongside Florentino and Sephra, which is fairly common. And Richter, who didn't make an appearance in that last game, with a little bit of a surprise, he's going to make an appearance to get things underway for Latam. Tulan Teamy will be the lock in as that gives them a very good brawling frontline already. The Teamy Tulan combo is actually one of my favorites in team fights because you have a stun mm. followed by that frontline damage. Right, especially because Tulan likes to flit in and out of danger, gets right in the front lines, and if he's ever bought low, he has the Teamy there to save them. Now, I thought that Kareem and Ace had reached the next level, the next plane of intelligence by not banning at the man. crush, but then now the Valheim comes out, and I'm sad again. But you like seeing Valheim sometimes, don't you? In the Dark Slayer lane, I don't think that's going to happen this game. I think that's going to yep. be either Richter there or, you know, they'll have Richter in the bottom lane. Ryoma and Talanis for Ace One. The team fight comp continues. Ace One are playing the ADC meta. This is Teamy Talanis for that uh, dragon lane side. The Ryoma presumably in the jungle. Tulan for mid. The only thing left is who's countering their Richter up top. Given their limited options, I'd favor someone like a Xenial who can simply out-tank them. Crest is here. Mirad alongside him, and Nakroth will round it out. Oh, that means the Ryoma's going up top as the Nakroth slips into the jungle for Echo. I actually really like this Ace One draft. Yeah. This is a really solid draft by EU standards, by NA standards. Very out of the ordinary for Latam, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, provided they can play to its strengths. If they go for a team fight, Cream still may scrape out the victory because they do have that crash, they do have that Murad. I do gotta I do have to say that I like Cream's draft as well, because what they've done here is very smart. They ban out the Yebaneth and then they go for the crush. Because Yebaneth is the natural crush counter. He's able to go for that nature's realm. When you pop the metamorphosis, they get rid of that. They go for the crush. The only thing I'm having doubts about is the Valheim, but their strategy is clear. They want very mobile heroes to get in and out of fights. Valheim, he has that extra mobility with Bullet Storm, but he has the stuns as well. And what they're trying to do has a, is have a very aggressive composition, get in there with the Murad, take out the Atelanas, or at least scare her back, and that will give them the advantage in team fights or take down towers. I don't know if I can, I think this draft depends heavily on who is playing what, because I do think whichever team plays more to uh, the macro meta plays more to their own farm, will win this game, flat out. Because Murad, great in team fights, only if he's farmed. If the Murad is team fighting from moment one, he's not gonna get there. Now, Ace One actually could live in a world where the Murad's team fighting from moment one and still does get power farmed if Ace One are fighting the Murad and losing to him from the early game. So, whichever team plays better in terms of macro, controlling their own jungle, getting their lane farm, will win this game. I think that Ace One they need to play to their macro strengths. Yes. And I think that Cream needs to prevent them from playing to their macro strengths. If they're aggressive and they prevent them from being able to macro properly, then I think Cream is going to win this game because they have the more aggressive composition. But Cream need to do so not just controlling and forcing the team fights, but also letting their Mirad power farm. Yeah. Well, I'm pleased to see a Mirad because that's something we felt was lacking in earlier games, but Vex I mean, the rest like... of the roster makes you go, oh, okay, maybe not here, maybe Vex. not here. I am more excited that this might be Ace One bringing the ADC meta mm. to Latin America, because I think we were chatting before we uh, came live in the Latin America region, and we were thinking the team who can bring map control and new meta to Latin America could run away with things. Can Ace One do that over cream? We're about to find out as there's an early team Ooh. fight. Welcome to Latam, Daniel. Yes. <laughs> Durst and Mirotic fall back as Ace One kick things off to an explosive start, but they turn that invade, they turn that successful pressure immediately. 
into gold. Right, but while all that was happening, Murad is in the top right portion of your mini-map, as you can see, they're already getting the invade on. Yeah, and Grant will be able to take a little bit of jungle back in their favor. Ace One did recall, actually. Fran, they sent him back by a recall to go down to the bottom lane and just focus on farm. So Gretz goes another dimension through the normal part of terrain of the map instead of going through the wall that makes it a little bit more difficult to get through. But I would say overall this double invade helps out Cream because Murad is vulnerable to invade. So if he's able to get his farm safely, then he is in a good spot. Fran will be down in the bot lane versus this Valheim. We've talked about this matchup maybe a little bit too much. Uh, but we do favor that uh, Valheim. Interesting to note, there is no support running a support item yet over on the Cream Esports side. That is very interesting because you normally want to get those stacks either on the Waterstone or the Windstone right away. I want to point out, though, in this bottom lane... Team oh, Pancha! Oh, yeah, exactly. Teamy with that aggression down in the bot lane. Before that happened, I thought that Florentino had jumped into the game because they were having a nice gentleman's duel down there. Yeah, Benja got knocked down incredibly low, and that means he had to recall Fran responsible for that with the aid of Mithy, and as a result, the tower will get chipped. It could actually fall. Echoes here. This is really good play. Ace one, uncontested, will take the first tower of the game under two minutes. Yeah, that's very difficult to do because under three minutes, the tower has extra damage resistance, so that is just giving it up from Cream. Surely this is a bit much though. Oh, but Durson um, dives in. They've got the damage. Durson's no HP. Mithy will be in. Ebody's the first to fall. Gret's doing a lot of damage himself and Fran's got no HP left. His Ben just scoops him up. Mithy can't find the kills. He'll resurrect, sure, but he was only able to get Gret. And I think even that resurrect was baited out, meaning the Cream Esports do win the first team fight. Yeah, Cream somehow managed to salvage that, but they do lose the Abyssal and they are down in gold. So I don't even know if it was worth it for them. And I'm a little bit worried, TJ, because they just ran into that fight with no real engage. They only managed to salvage it because of Gret with that amazing temporal turbulence. And Gret died. Every death that comes out from their star jungler on that Mirad will hurt them disproportionately. It, it, absolutely, it will. But he does have another goal to his name. Perhaps he can continue to farm up. Yeah, definitely a little bit old. His channel's being stolen by the Valheim. <laughs> Not out of the ordinary. Are we in solo queue? <laughs> what is happening? My games, the Valheims are always stealing jungle. <laughs> He is building. He did build into that war boot, will help him get those farm stacks a lot higher, very much more quickly with that Mr. Stabby in his first item there. But it will hurt if he tries to go in the middle of a team fight and get stunned out because you don't have those gilded griefs. Echoes level seven. How that has he done that? By being good at the video game. Nice. Echo is doing a really good job repeatedly being brought into these lanes to get wave clear. And as a result, they'll know challenge up top Durst and be absolutely melted. Echo will eat a little bit too much tower, but he's there to guard the back, making sure Durst can't leap from underneath. Now he'll dive in after the being a bro and get the kill at the cost of his own life for the trade. Positive, they get the tower and they'll scoop up Mirotic, surely. He's got the retaliation. There's the flicker. Oh, nicely done with the jungle strike. He'll get to safety. Oh, e buddy. <laughs> that was rude. Endless action here in the last time. We can't even keep up, but that was... That was nice aggression there from Echo, but I gotta say, the trust wasn't there. If he had just continued to dive under the tower and not flee, then the, the being a bro could have saved him, but it did not. Durson will try and metamorphose is here in mid. He's just at level four and he's all happy to show him off. But a spawner at level seven across the board. Has Macro arrived in Latam, Daniel? I, I think it has. The Telenospic has come and they're looking for that gold. They're filling their coffers and they have that massive gold advantage. They're focusing on farm. They're focusing on jungle. They're hitting their waves. And Ace One have built such a massive gold advantage in the early game. They're absolutely destroying Cream Esports. Exactly. They only have a five to four kill lead, but two Abyssals, two Towers. They are just dominating them in every factor of the game outside of fighting. We've seen Pain Gaming do a relatively good job of macro. That's why they're currently topping the region. I did not expect Ace 1 to drop down this far or to be down this far and be doing this well. Is Ace 1 my new just for fun? Don't do not do this to yourself, <laughs> Daniel. Don't, don't hurt yourself again. I'm telling you as a friend. Oh my, it's so tempting though. This macro is just making me so happy. Mithy will chase Benja down bottom uh, with an optimistic chain lance. 
but sadly, he doesn't roll a 20, and we'll need to back off to mid. Ring of the Fiend being built here for both supports, which means we're going to have very quick raccoons slash sharks here on our side. Difficult to deal with. Durson caught out by the Judgment Blade. That was a sick heal. Gret, though, overextends to try and overcompensate. Oh, my goodness. That is the difficulty with building, building War Boots right there because he got stun locked and he nearly died because of it. Latam individual mechanical play, though. Still insane as ever. Ace one do take the tower. Skarneo back behind the second. And they're able to push five mid here because they already pushed out the waves. Durson will go through, trying to hold this tower. He'll metamorphosis. Echo's low, but he pales out. And the rest of the team's here to Brawley. Buddy in trouble from Benja from the side. But he's got the rest of his team to back him up. And the eagle eyes there to chunk Benja low. They've got Gret. They'll get Benja. The rest of the team does survive. And this is going to go from bad to worse here from Cream because they really do not have the late game. Telenos can secure the late game by her lonesome, despite the fact that they have early game heroes like Dioma and Tula on the side. Another tower to fall. Ace One doing an insanely good early game. And like you said, their late game doesn't look shabby either. Exactly. As long as they continue to farm up Telenos, who now is going to be going into 45 crit chance when she gets that bow of slaughter online. They, she's going to be chunking through the members of Kareem, and there really isn't anything they can do about it. Not when the Abyssal's against. Look at this gold lead. I'm loving it. I, more gold, uh, more greed, more gold. And you say you're not a Gilder fan. <laughs> Dream Esports being absolutely destroyed in terms of map control and most importantly, wave clear. A lot of people underestimate this. I see people all the time leaving their lane to get jungle monsters. That's inefficient. You get more farm from clearing a single wave of minions than anything the jungle can give you. Exactly. One melee minion is more uh, the same amount as a jungle monster, and the the bigger ones are even more. Durson with the Metamorphosis has been caught out. Gret will dive in. There's the full Temporal Turbulence. Oh, nice use of being a pro, but it's wasted now. Everybody needs to bail. Mirotic's here. He'll get one alongside Neo. Neo for two, actually. This has turned into a disastrous team fight for Ace One. <laughs> Neo will fall in trade, but the rest is back to Cream, and that's more than enough. Gret will get one, two more as Rad over extends. <laughs> He'll secure a mutually assured destruction, but that means somehow Cream are back in the game. We're back to Lat M's favorites. The team fights are never ending, but I love Red staring a Reiki shot in the eye and just continuing to fire. She says, I don't Come care. Back, I can take it. I can take <laughs> you down. Uh, and he didn't do a decent job of it. He Neo, took down two. Neo fell. <laughs> The rest of the team wants to get something off of this team fight. Cream Esports, for the most part, settled for a wave clear. They're still dealing with Echo running around the map at high speed, clearing waves. So, no major objectives picked up, but they get a reprieve. One way for Cream to get back into this game is to use the amazing late game of Murat Chunk down Fran in the back line. Also, Marotic has a very nice late game in Richter that was buffed recently, and Neo as well with the Shining Light, Blind Light combo will start to chunk when she gets more items to her name. Ace, though, realized, hang on, 5-5 five, five team fights aren't really our <laughs> biggest guaranteed victory we condition. We've moved on. we moved on yeah. to greater things. <laughs> Dark Slayer may be a better choice, and they'll be able to pick it up, Echo claiming it for the team, meaning that now they just need to focus on towers. Right, 8,000 gold lead with the Drake. It's going to be such a powerful push that they can make here. Can they start getting onto these high ground towers? If they don't, Cream has a way back in. The Swell Siege minions are here in the top lane. They'll begin to push in. This should be a hard tower defense, but Cream are here to attempt it. Mithy will lead it alongside Echo. The tower's gone. Man, Warbuses could come out here, but he's not using it quite yet, speaking of Durzen. He does have the option. Maxine in the bot lane will get clear. Here's the crash against tower up top and in mid. Echo chased low by Grant. The team fight underway. Medmorphus is spent. Fran will be burned down. That's a good double kill coming out. It's mid the out as well for good. The Drake will be slain. The high ground stands tall, but Ace have back rode well enough. Maxine will press in against the tower, and he can't quite get it. Gret chases him out. Tower's down to half HP as Maxine Spectral Ire will keep him up. Ace continue to press forward elsewhere, getting a decent amount of clear. Seemed like a win there for a moment for Cream because they, they committed to one side and took a 4v2 fight. But because Ace spread out, they still re maintain their gold lead, and they start putting pressure on the tower. They didn't get one, but this is encouraging. 
This Missile Dragon will go back over to Ace, however, knowing that Cream for now need to play defensive, recoup their losses. Ace take advantage of even the lost team fight to press forward and secure an enraged Abyssal buff. Right, and they don't even need, they're able to get it even with that Abyssal Curse on their side. Fran will pick up that Dark Blessing and that will help him out to help him to stay alive through the burst in Cream. That was really fun, actually. Midi was just tanking that uh, Golem so that Fran could play further back with the Eagle Eye and pick it up. Yeah, that's good mechanics on their side so that they can pull that back, keep her safe. Fran can do what he needs to do. Although Fran is a little bit too close to the entirety of Cream Esports for my liking. It's okay, penetrating shot. We'll, we'll reveal everyone. It's fine. Maxi pokes into the bush, realizes exactly how many people there are, <laughs> and all of a sudden they're in no hurry to press it. It's like, oh, hi. Uh, hmm, we're not expecting you guys to be here. Fran will get the wave clear, though. They've got another uh, tower threat, and they do want to take the fight while they can, given the gold advantage and the enraged abyssal buff. Mifty for the stun. Durson in trouble, actually. Will spend the metamorphosis just to survive. Those are early ultimates spent defensively, though. H1 can capitalize soon as the wave crashes in mid. Echo will go wow. in. Absolutely melting. Oh. Grant, the Eagle Eye, hunts him down, and Fran has him. Now the tower push will come in. They've got the tower down to a quarter HP, but they can't quite finish it off. Ebody gets another kill. Make that two. The tower is gone. There will be an attempt at a Thunderbird shut down by Neo, who dives forward for backseed. Right, Durson into the midst of the team, and with the Spectral Ire, finds revenge. They're able to take down two towers that is absolutely huge for them. Mirage tried his best with that Hunter's Mark, but down too much gold to get anything to happen. Neo consistently a hero for this cream esports side, but one is not enough. Yeah, exactly. Marotic and Neo trying their best to get in there, but they just cannot do the damage again because they've been out macro, TJ. Echo, chased down, burned down by Benja. The Valheim's coming online, but it's too little, too late. <laughs> Goodbye. One high ground remains. <laughs> Goodbye, he says. He's like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to turn on this ring of the feed, and uh, I'll see you later, okay? Zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Right away from there. Cream Esports definitely feeling the effect of an ace one side that's not afraid to turn down an invitation to team fight. Right, they say no thanks, we'll see you later. And they are doing so well because of it. Look at their gold lead. They're continuing to push it even though they're losing members. Blades of Eternity picked up now on two players, Echo and Fran. More important for Echo, because that means on the assassin character, he's no longer afraid to die. He can go very far into the enemy team. Exactly, and with the being a bro, he has two separate resurrects, so don't oh, expect yes. him to run away too easily this time. Cream are lingering. This bot lane tower will be the focus, and Mitty's going to go in for the engage with the Pooty Poot stun. The opening's there with the Eagle Eye. Durson, half HP, instantly. And Morpheus is up now without rage, however. Wave will crash against the tower, but Ace, they don't engage off of it. Maxine instead flanks around the side for a little bit of poke. E-Buddy will get attacked very low by Gran, and the tower stands. Gran could take this down outside of the range of the tower, even without the wave. I, I'm very worried, actually, because Ace it feels like a minute control of this game for a while, but he can't quite win the team fight. They need to decisively take it. You see Fran trying to poke in there, see when he can't get done. Perhaps they can take it this time. Here's the wave to arrive. Durson to stall up. Benja, his wave clear on Valheim, just a little bit too intimidating. And Ace ones feel un unsure what to do. They made their indecision maybe calculated, though, because they know that this Dark Slayer is coming up. Right, they didn't want to overextend right into the Dark Slayer. That's the worst thing you can do is lose your entire team, and then the opposing members get that objective. And so, yeah, they're able to get that now, uh -oh. and they're pretty safe. Ring of the Fiend does expose both Mithy and Echo. They're backing up. Dark Slayer will be taken. Now the fight can break out. Ace one are comfortable. Durson will spend the metamorphosis. His survival is the most important thing. But Mithy has a ring of the feed of his own. He'll go in for a four line stun. That's a lot of damage from Grant. His temporal turbulence is perfect. But Echo shuts down Mirata because that's good opening. Mithy will stay alive. A double kill. Echo in the back lines. And Durson so low as Brad chases the whole team back. The Thunderbirds there. Anybody cleaning up. And it's Cream Esports down to just one player. Neo, the hero for the team. The one man who stood tall, can't do enough. And it takes one with game number one. Fret was so close to taking out so many members there, but even if he had, there would have been resurrections. It was just too much macro on the side of Ace One. Ah, oh, they're growing up in